I went through the whole day just feeling very emotional and not knowing what to do. And so on the first day, I think I didn't learn anything at all. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Renee Delane. On this channel, I do tips, talks and advice for nurses. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome. If you've not yet subscribed, tell me in the comments which video you're looking for. So in today's video, it's all about placements. So I will be giving you some top tips on what to do and what to expect when you are at placement. So the NMC requires student nurses to complete 2,300 hours of clinical placement. Now this 2,300 hours is over the three years where you're practicing to become a nurse. So what can you expect on the first day? You will know nothing unless you're coming from a clinical background. When you arrive on placement, you will feel a lot of different emotions. You will feel awkward. You will feel like you're out of your depth you will feel like you don't understand any of the terminology that they're using you will feel like i don't belong here i'm so unsure what i need to do but you're there to learn all these emotions are natural i had these emotions when i first started and if i think back to my first placement i went through the whole day just feeling very emotional and not knowing what to do and so on the first day i think i didn't learn anything at all your first day is for you to start finding your feet start to understand things a little bit more so let's just talk a bit more about what you can expect and what you need to do before you go on placement your unit university will let you know which placement area you will be going so whether that be into a ward or a community placement or somewhere that you know you never thought a nurse actually works in that area so one of the first things that you want to do when you know where you're going on your placement is to call your placement area now the reason for this is that they may want to give you information before the day and so you want to call to introduce yourself to try and speak to your mentor sometimes your placement is not always a 12-hour shift maybe your mentor will be doing earlies and lates you don't want to wait and just turn up assuming that your placement area will start at 7 a.m or 8 30 a.m or 9 a.m just call and ask them what shift pattern they do so all those little information you can call and just confirm those things in your phone call if possible i would also say visit the placement area this is so you can familiarize yourself with the room because you know imagine in a hospital they've got different levels different floors different wards if you can visit then this will be great because you are able to then go and see exactly where you need to go on the day so that you're not running late on the day and you turn up on time another thing i would advise you to do if you know the name of the ward or when you call just ask them like what type of procedures do you do on this ward or what sort of things do you do say for example if they're in the community what sort of long-term conditions do you come across and then you can do some research on these things also if you're on a ward what sort of procedures do they do on this ward if it's a urology ward for instance they do TURPs they do TURBTs what do they stand for what sort of procedure is this how is a patient prepped for surgery so you know a bit of research into the observations that you might need to do before and after that will help you when you go on placement at least you know a little bit of what to expect so now for the practical stuff make sure you have comfortable shoes now invest if ever a time that you invest your money in anything at all it's to get a comfortable pair of shoes you will be on your feet sometimes in 12 hour shifts sometimes even more than 12 hours try and invest in a good pair of comfortable shoes that will support your feet during the day even if your first placement is a nine to five guaranteed you will be going on a ward at some point so you do need to invest in a pair of shoes clocks are great for shoes crocs are also great for shoes 
you know there are other shoes companies out there available but you know these are two that i think do some of the most comfortable shoes out there the next thing that you need to know is that nails and nail polish is not allowed on your placement area so if you wear nails or if you like wearing nail polish all of these need to be removed before the day it's just not allowed for infection control purposes when it comes to your hair you do not want to have hair that is hanging down you know you'll be very busy running up and down wards if you're in the community you'll be busy going up and down stairs to go and visit patients so you really want to have your hair in a way where it's not getting in the way the next thing is rings so if you wear any type of rings with a stone this is not allowed and again for infection control purposes so you will need to wear like a plain very plain wedding band okay so anything with like a stone inside of it you will need to take that off and leave it at home i know for some people um they prefer not to wear a ring at all but if you have like a plain wedding band then yes you can wear that but stones are not allowed in the um clinical placement area the next one is to bring water hydrate yourself keep yourself hydrated throughout the day this is one of the things that you know we forget to do we forget to stop and look after ourselves definitely get whether that be a small little notebook or if you think you can hold everything in till the end of the day where you can note things down in that notebook then you can get a bigger notebook for that but a notebook is so essential for any students out there all the abbreviated words and conditions yeah you will need to note these down now another point that i wanted to talk about is reflection in practice so as soon as you start on your nursing placement you will probably be expected to do reflection in practice now reflection is super super important in practice because this helps us to sort of evaluate ourselves evaluate how we can do things better and the nmc also recommends that we reflect when you become a qualified nurse you will continue reflecting as this is a part of the requirement to stay on the NMC register. Now, there are different ways that people do reflection and I just wanted to highlight to you guys that I do have reflection journals on Amazon and um, two examples of the journals that I have available on Amazon are these two and they do have different styles. So one of my journal... It gives you the prompts and it tells you sort of what things you need to consider and then it also evaluates you know what are the three things that you learned today what made you smile so yeah this is one of the journals and then another one of the journals is sort of laid out differently so it gives you the little boxes where you can write with the prompts and then it gives you an extra page there where you can expand on um your reflection so yeah these are two journals i've got a link in my description if you want to check out any of my journals they are different designs and i also do have notebooks so do definitely go and check these out so another thing that I wanted to highlight, so before you go to placement, you need to make sure you have a contact number for your link lecturer. They link in from your university to that placement area. And then, you know, if you've got any issues or concerns, this is the person that you need to contact. This person will be responsible for you whilst you're out on placement. So whilst on placement, what are some of the things that you will be doing? So you may spend a lot of your time speaking to patients. You will also spend a lot of time doing observations. You might spend a whole day on placement just standing there looking. Your mentor might ask you to join in and do something, but you must know your limitations. You might be observing somebody doing a wound care, somebody inserting a catheter, somebody giving an injection. You know, those are the sort of things that you'll be observing. If you feel like you're being asked to do something that is not within your limitations and it's something that you've never done before then speak up and say so you may also be assisting with hygiene so washing a patient changing their bed linen and this is something that you will definitely be getting involved in you may also be helping out with toileting now i remember when i was a student nurse i probably spent half of my day 
getting the commode, taking the commode from the sluice to, to the patient, from the patient to the sluice. And I sometimes ended up feeling like a healthcare assistant and you will probably feel like that, but you learn so much valuable lessons from these tasks that you do. And these tasks actually help you to become a better nurse, become more compassionate and caring. So, you know, if you ever end up feeling like that, then that's absolutely fine. Now, one of the things that I think people don't think about enough and it was a fear of mine going into nursing was performing last office so this is when a patient dies you have to prepare the patient's body ready for the porter to come and take the patient away so you will be involved in preparing the patient this was one of my fears going into nursing I absolutely did not want to face this fear at all and I remember the first time it happening I wanted to run I wanted to go and hide but I couldn't and I had to face my fears in that moment and you know I just put a brave face on I did it I let them know that I've never done this before this is a fear of mine and my mentor was really super super supportive they talked to me through all the things that they're doing they let me know that I still need to speak to the patient as if they are able to hear me this was one of the things I was like why why am I still talking to the patient they've passed but you know you still have to consider the dignity of the patient and everything like that I did a reflection on it and you know it wasn't as bad as I thought if I had let my fear get in the way I wouldn't have done it and it would have held me back a bit but I did it and after that I would just go into it just being you know that brave person who absolutely knew what they were doing so this is something that you will be doing within your placement area you will be taking part in last office so my top tip when you go on your placement in your first placement area is for you to volunteer so if you're on for example evening medication round and your mentor is going to do an injection observe them do it the first time and then volunteer to do it the second time you can start showing initiative you can start showing that you really really want to learn and you can start showing that you're a hands-on person something as well that you may want to consider is if other professionals come on your placement area you can ask to go and observe that person so if you're in the community it might be something like a tissue viability nurse you might ask your mentor if you can go and observe exactly what they do in their role or if you're on a ward it might be a dietitian or a physio ask to just go in and observe what that person does and how they do their role because when you're qualified as a nurse you might need to make referrals into these other professionals and so if you know exactly what they do and how their role works then this will help you in terms of referring a patient the next tip is for you to ask questions there's absolutely no stupid questions and this is how you learn by asking those questions that you're not sure about by asking for those things that you think actually I need clarification a good mentor will not mind you asking questions my next tip is to get your competencies signed off so don't go through the whole placement not looking at your competency folder so your university will provide you with this folder before you go out on placement please please just check every single day you know if you've covered something ask your mentor to sign it off if you've done something with another nurse who is not your mentor ask them to sign it off there and then and one of the top tip that i can say to you if you're in a placement area and somebody asks you to leave your folder somewhere so they'll pick it up and sign don't ever do that don't leave your portfolio in the hands and responsibility of anybody else if your folder goes missing that's it everything you've done up to that point is gone this is the only place where you will document what your competencies are and what you've been signed off from so far so just make sure that you have your portfolio your folder in your possession at all time don't leave it to the responsibility of anybody else get your competencies signed off 
the next thing I would say is that you need to join a union. So if anything ever goes wrong on your placement area, your union is there to represent you, support you and give you that advice. If you're not a part of a union, you might not be covered if you then go and join a union after something happens in your placement area. So you want to make sure that you've joined a union before you go on your placement. A really good union for students is the RCN because they do have a library where they have articles and books. This library is based in central London. You can visit the library. Not to say there aren't other unions out there, but I found the RCN quite good when I was a student because I had access to a lot of journals and articles that was useful for when I wanted to write my essays. Now, I didn't really need to use the union whilst I was at university, but I just think it's a good way for you to start keeping on top of things like this because when you become a nurse, you will definitely be joining a union. So to be clear, the things that you need to be mindful of when you're on placement is that you need to be professional, you need to know your limitations, you need to be reflecting on your practices and you need to just have a can-do attitude. Happy placement, happy going out there and learning and I'll see you guys in my next video.